Okay, this is a video to check if your glutes are active and firing, and if they're not, how to reactivate them. We'll cover glute medius and minimus, and then we'll go on to cover glute max. Uh, glute medius particularly lives on the side of the hip. They call it the deltoid of the hip, so you think the deltoid muscle. It sits down here and lives on there, and it's responsible for leg abduction, amongst other things. And that's how the movement we test it in. And then your glute max is on the back and it does leg extension amongst other movements, but we test it in extension to see if it's firing. Uh, glute inactivity is, is a very common, a very common problem, something I see a lot of. And what I see a lot of as well is people coming in saying, I don't understand, I've been doing all of my glute exercises and my hips are killing me, my back's killing me. And then you go and check the farming patterns of the glutes and there's just no activity there. So what's happening is you're going to exercise your glute medius, but what's happening instead is your TFL at the front or your QO in the back or a combination of the two are overworking to compensate and it can lead to back pain, hip pain, all kinds of wonderful fun stuff. Unfortunately, it's not something you could do to yourself. So you need a second person to help you. So my wife Vicky's come to help me demonstrate and we're going to check her glute medius first and I'll talk you through it all and we'll see what happens. If it is active, we're going to get a, a decent strong contraction and then we'll be happy when we move on. If it collapses, what we do is we repeat the process that we did three times, have a short break of 10 to 15 seconds, repeat the process three times, short break, and keep going in that way until we can get the muscle activated. Okay, so the start position for your glute medius, you can see Vicky's in the sideline position, she's got a pillow under her head. It's important to have your head in a neutral position, you don't want it tilted up or draping down, because we want to keep the spine and the spinal erectors all in a nice flat line. She's got shoulder over shoulder, so she's not leaning forward or leaning back, and she's got hips stacked over hip. So what we're going to do is take the bottom leg and bend the knee forward up like so. Now with the top leg, the leg we're going to check, first thing we do, Vicky will lift her foot, so she's lifting her toes up towards her body. Secondly, she's going to squeeze her knee tight, so she's going to squeeze her quad to get her leg nice and straight. So she's got a toe lifted and a knee locked. Then, move the foot back towards me and we want it in a position so that if Vicky was to look down the most she could see of her foot is the big toenail on her big toe obviously. Happy? Can't even see that. Can't even see that. If you can't even see that it's even better because <laughs> bringing it back is getting rid of all of the hip flexion and the hip flexors can compensate in this movement. So foot up, knee locked, heel back and now I'm just going to have my hand on her hip to stop it rocking back and you're going to lift your leg to hip height. Good. Now to check if they're active, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press down just above the ankle and Vicky's going to push up with all her might to the ceiling. Good. And there's a, that's a decent contraction. Yeah. I won in the end which is, you know, I've got a very long lever all the way out here on her ankle and I've got all of my body weight to put down. But what we want to see is resistance, okay? What we don't want to see is this. So lift your foot, lock your knee, heel back, and then just give up on this one. Lift up in the air and then push up. And there's me just overpowering, which actually happened in take one, which is why <laughs> her hips actually fired up in take two, yeah? First time, bang, just drop straight down. So if that happens, all you do is lift, Lock, heel back, up, push, lift, lock, good, not too fast, push up, go through the cues each time, lift, lock, heel back, lift up, <laughs> and push, and then break for 10 to 15 seconds, yeah, so it's three, little break, three, little break, and then eventually you'll go lift, lock, back, up, push. And get that muscle contraction that we're looking for and you can feel it under your hand you can feel the muscle contract under your hand so that's our glute media is fired up we we'll then turn over and repeat on the other side okay glute max so glute max take the pillow away 
Okay, so these go onto our front. As you can see, we practice it. So you straight away gone hand over hand, hand on the forehead. Yeah. Keeping our head, neck, and spine in a nice neutral position. What we're going to do this time, so I'm going to do the glute closest to me. We're going to do the same thing with the leg. Lift the foot, lock the knee. This time, we're going to bring the leg slightly out to the side. And then from here, Vicky's going to lift the leg up and then push up to the ceiling. Good. And relax. So we're looking for res that, that resistance. We're not really looking for a flop. It's important to lift this leg and lock this knee because if you just lift your leg as it is, please, and then lift it up and hold it, and now push up. So that was stronger, but the hamstrings are getting involved. Yeah, the hamstrings will help with leg extension. So if we lift and lock by squeezing the quads, we deactivate the hamstrings and we force the glute to engage. And then lift up and then push. Good. And that's a fairly decent contraction there. If it was weak, just drop straight down three times, 10 second break, three times, and just keep going. If we were really struggling to get it to engage, we'd lift the foot, lock the knee, lift the leg, and now I'd shorten the lever. Never push on or behind the knee, but I come onto a mid thigh and now push up. And it gives a better fighting chance of resisting. Relax. And it gives the glute more time to engage. So we could do three mid thigh and then come back to the ankle for the next set of three. Really make sure it's fired up and engaged. And then just repeat on the other side. So that's how you check if your glutes are far and are active. And if not, how to reactivate them. You would guarantee if you've been doing glute exercises and, you, and they're not firing, you go and do those same glute exercises the next day and you will, will feel a hundred times different because the muscle will actually be working rather than being in that compensatory uh, pattern. Thanks for that. That's your luck. <laughs>